you boldly write that today, the Republicans are making a transition to becoming a true revolutionary party. You add the right-wing populists intend to use the GOP as an already existing organization to grasp power. An added advantage is that control of one of the main parties offers them a nonviolent legal route to power. Talk to me about how you see that playing out over the past few years and how someone like Trump fits into that story. Yes, keep in mind that in different countries and in different uh, time periods, uh, the situation was different. So back in the revolutions of the Russian Revolution and so on, we had the left wing counter elites who led the revolution. But you're completely right. The major difference now in the United States is that the Democratic Party, which had been the party of working people, has become the party of the 10%. Right. And establishment Republicans used to be the party of 1%. And still, uh, maybe the majority of Republicans are those. Um, But the new rising um, populist movement within the Republican Party, and why is it more successful than uh, people on the left, like Bernie Sanders and uh, so on? Because they are channeling the popular discontent, not just Asian Americans. The quintessential democratic uh, contingent, um, the Latinos, they are switching in droves to the Republican Party. Uh, So that is a telltale uh, sign for me. How does Tucker Carlson fit into this story? So he is um, a very good example of a dissident elite, right? He is not uh, proposing violence, but he has been criticizing the uh, ruling class. In fact, uh, New York Times has counted how many times he called uh, the governing elites in the United States the ruling class. It's his uh, saying, right? And he has been criticizing it from the establishment. Now that uh, Fox News is, of course, part of the uh, establishment of the ideological elites in the United States. And now when I wrote the book, he was still working and I actually speculated a little bit why he hasn't been fired. Of course, as soon as I turned the book in, he was fired from Fox and now he has his own uh, independent platform, but he is wealthy. That's what many, many people don't understand, that in order to become a revolutionary, you don't have to be poor. In fact, it helps to have wealth. Lenin, he was a noble. He actually, he owned land and peasants were paying, you know, uh, rent to him. Yeah. Right. And that helped him to support the revolution. I talk about one of the wealthiest people in Russia at the time gave tons of money to Bolsheviks. Right. So, Tucker Carlson, just because he is a wealthy person, it doesn't mean that he disqualifies himself from being a dissident elite. Peter, why would anyone choose to be a counter elite when all of the incentives are there to at least aspire to become part of the normal elite? Like what lies on the side of counter elite is social suicide, career suicide, getting tagged as all kinds of bad words. So what will incentivize elite aspirants to sort of flip and join the counter-elite side? I'll give you two reasons. First of all, being a counter-elite is a high-risk by high uh, potential gain strategy. As somebody said, a successful revolution is a 10,000 new jobs for revolutionaries. All right? So if you, you're beating your head against the wall, and you see uh, millions of other people who cannot get into positions, you, you know your chances of trying to get into, get into established elites are zero, then even a small chance of a successful revolution may be worth it. That's one reason. But this is very crass and materialistic, and people are much more complicated beings than just, you know, homo economici. The second uh, driving reason is that in these end times, it is palpable, the sense of injustice is palpable. It is not right that the majority of the population is losing ground and all the riches go to. In many of the, of the wealthy, they also don't think it's right. So young individuals coming from very elite backgrounds, they could be motivated by trying to uh, change the system for the better because uh, many humans, uh, they want to do good. And so uh, changing the system for the better is to do good. Of course, uh, many of those individuals, they start by trying to do good, but then uh, because they don't get anywhere, they turn to violent. 